Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Shadows of Abaddon Let's Play episode. We are playing as Tanya the Techie, and last episode we defeated so many bosses. We defeated the King Slime, the Eye of Cthulhu, as well as the Decree, and we also did the Goblin Invasion. So this episode we've got a lot more stuff to do. I definitely want to go ahead and defeat the Eater of Worlds, and I think there's another boss we can do shortly after that. It's a pumpkin boss. So we'll have to see if we can get to that one this episode. And there's also a new armor set we can craft from this decree fur. So there's the helmet, the chest, and we do have enough. Excellent. We don't have to refight them. So we've got 27 defense and our damage is 15. When we put that on, we went up to 33 defense and our damage went up to 16. So that's nice. And the set bonus gives us 15% more damage when we're in the snow biome. Ranged projectiles, frostburn enemies. That's actually really cool. I think we've got our arena for the Eater of Worlds in the ice biome. So that'll be pretty sweet. Oh, and it looks like we have a new NPC down here. I've never met this one before. Okay, so this one sells a music box and decree chop. Summons a howling death pup to follow you around. Okay, so this is kind of like just uh, pets and music and stuff like that. I think we're getting the damage bonus in this biome already. Yeah, you can see we're getting Frostburn on the enemies. Pretty powerful stuff. Okay, I think this was our entrance. And this is the arena that I built. It's just a simple two-layer arena. And I'm planning on trying to use the slime mount to get up to the surface. So we can fight them up here because it's a lot easier. Okay, here we go. We've got an orb right below us. And we will be ready to fight this boss in just a second. I think this will be the bomb. Let's go get ready and see if we can get to the surface in time. Uh-oh, it's kind of stressful. <laughs> At least we will bounce on the boss if we get towards it. There we go. Yes, we are to the surface. I think we're good to go now. And we've got our <laughs> frost burn. We've got the extra ice damage, the 15% in the ice biome. Okay, let's get it stunned. Ooh, these rocket boots are really helpful. I think we could have used meteor shots, which pierce a little bit, but I don't think we're gonna need it. We're just demolishing the Eater of Worlds. And once again, Calamity extra music mod for the epic, awesome music. Although this song is so loud, I always have to drop it by like 10 decibels in the editing afterwards. I just noticed you can actually shoot those spores. It's pretty handy. And you can shield dash into them. The only problem with killing the boss right here is all of the... Ooh, <laughs> that was close. All of the scales fall into the caves and everything. So you have to kind of run around a little bit. And is that the last bit? There we go. That was <laughs> very simple, but this is kind of the efficient way to beat the boss. If we would have had Meteor Shot, I'm sure that would have even been a lot easier. And we've got the Worm Scarf. Excellent. Let's go ahead and put that on instead of our Shackle. And we could roll that to like Warding and we're going to be unstoppable. So let's grab all of this. And I think now we can mine Lapis because we need to just upgrade our Pickaxe. And then that's a whole new tier of armor that we have access to. So let's craft that pickaxe. And we got it as a heavy one. We've got the normal shadow scale upgrades. And then we've got this hellstone altar. It's kind of cool. Functions as a demon altar. It's actually pretty nice. And then we've got the dread lantern, which can be crafted on a demon altar. And this requires pumpkin, shadow scales, and life embers. 
and this summons, I think, the pumpkin boss. So I really want to try to get to that this episode. Then we've got two magic weapons. Ooh, we can upgrade our, our needler into a corrupted needler. But I think we need a little bit more demonite, so let's go ahead and kill the Eye of Cthulhu real quick. There we go. So I think all we need is some ebon sand and cactus. So I just bought some ebon sand from this guy. Hopefully he's got cactus. Ooh, he's got pumpkin. That's amazing. We need that to summon the pumpkin boss. And we could buy some wood, why not? That way we can keep our trees in our world. I don't think he sells any cactus though. Okay, I think that's all the cactus we need. We've got 82 now. So that'll be enough to craft it and then try it out for a little bit. But I think I'm gonna stick with our current energy rifle since that's so good. Oh, and we just got a meteorite that landed. Let's give this a shot. Ooh, that's a lot more accurate. Yeah, that looks actually pretty good. Maybe we'll try this out on a boss and use up the rest of our ammo. So now that we've got our new pickaxe, let's use a spelunker and get into the cavern layer. And hopefully we can grab some Lapis and craft a new armor set. And then I think we'll be good to go to fight the Queen Bee. Oh, and we also have this Bismuth material right here, I think. Yeah, nice. We'll try to pick some of that up too. Oh, and we'll get some hearts because we have a Spelunker. Well, probably a lot of hearts we've missed. Oh, and I think this is Lapis. Yep, raw Lapis. Okay, I'm starting to notice the texture. It looks a little bit more like silver when we're using the Splunker Potion. But we've already got 17. Go ahead and use that. So two raw lapis will combine into a refined lapis. And then we need 20, 30, 45. So we need 90 total. Here we go. A big bunch of lapis and our last heart crystal. Whoa, what is this? I think that must be new or something because I would have seen that probably. Maybe I just didn't notice. Is this like a whole new biome? This biome seems to go on for quite a while. I've been using sticky bombs to try to get around it. But yeah, it seems like a pretty big area. Well, I definitely can't figure out if this has an entrance or anything or if we just need to get a pickaxe that's capable of breaking through it. Although I think I've reached kind of the outskirts of at least this bottom right corner. Okay, we'll have to come back here later on. But right now we have 100 raw lapis, so we should be good to go to upgrade this armor and see what it does. Oh, we can also refine bismuth. Let's do that and just see what this can craft into. So it looks like we can do a magic armor set, um, a melee weapon. Ooh, we can craft a handgun. Oh, nice. I'm glad I checked on that. So we should definitely go mine up a bit more bismuth, because that could be really handy. And there we go. We got plenty of lapis, the armor, chest plate, the legs, and the helmet. Now let's see the difference. All right now we have 32 defense and 16 damage. And it looks like we stayed at 32 and 16. But let's see what the set bonus says. After taking damage, movement speed is increased by 20% for a short time. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm definitely down with that. Oh, and it also says 10% increased movement speed. Yeah, I think that's fun. And here's what our old armor set looks like. Actually looks really good. I thought this helmet was gonna cover the whole head just by the way it looks. But that's actually a really cool sort of, it looks like a raccoon hat or something. And then we've got this armor, which actually looks really futuristic and cool. And I turned off weapons out and I kind of like it because then we actually get to see Tanya a bit more. I ran out of uh, Spelunkers, so let's grab one more of these. And all we need is like eight Bismuth, I think. I think that might have been enough right there, but there's a little bit over here too, so let's just grab that as well. And now we can craft our rainbow handgun. Occasionally fires a rainbow shotgun blast. Sweet. And we got it rolled to intimidating. So let's see what this can do. Ooh. 
That's pretty sweet. So here we are in the jungle, and this is the arena that I built with a little house right here so we can set our spawn point and get out and fight the queen bee. So what I'm planning on doing is just using this as an arena. So all we need to do is go break the little queen bee uh, larva and then just teleport to the surface and we should be good. And hopefully we are close enough to the surface to where this shouldn't be an issue and we shouldn't despawn the boss because that would really be a bummer. There we go. Oh no, let's get to the surface. And please don't despawn. Oh yes, here we go. Time to fight the queen bee. Man, we're doing a ton of damage. Let's try our different weapons too. Man, I really love the rainbow attack. It's kind of hard to land these hits right now though. I need to focus. Okay, maybe let's try our needle gun. Just see how this one does. Oh, we already used all of our cactus. <laughs> yeah, if only that used bullets, it would be a lot better. I think this is my favorite gun though. The pace of the shots and everything are really nice. It's really easy to land hits. So I think the queen bee actually gives us um, progression stuff in this mod, which I really like because I don't think there's anything that drops that's all that good, but it actually unlocks new mobs, which then allow us to fight the pumpkin boss. So we need to kill the queen bee in order to fight all the bosses in this mod, because it seems like sometimes the queen bee is kind of just an afterthought, and in case you need like the bee bow or anything like that. But not really a necessary boss, but on this mod it is. It's much easier to dodge the little stingers it shoots when you're at the surface because it's a lot easier to see them because they contrast really well against the blue. Okay, getting pretty close here. And it's gonna get to the crazy end part of the fight where it dashes like super fast. Hopefully we can do enough damage before then. Ooh, nope, taking hits, not good. We still have our healing potion though. Yeah, let's pop a heal. There we go, Queen Bee defeated. Let's see if we get anything. Like I said, I don't think there's any new items for the Queen Bee, but we've got the Beekeeper, the Hive Pack, and yeah, just some normal bee stuff. But the big thing is that now at night, there will be special enemies that spawn and we can defeat them and they give us an item required to craft the spawn for the pumpkin boss. Oh, there we go. It's a pump fly. Let me see the name. Yeah, it's a pump fly. Nice. That gives us the life embers. We need to grab quite a few of those. So I think this is a good place to farm them up. It's the first place I've seen them spawn. It might just be because the spawn rate's high. I also bought a battle potion, so we can bump up the spawn rate here. Ooh, another pumpkin thing. A pump slime. So I'm experimenting with this rainbow gun, and it seems like it's actually pretty decent if you want to pierce through a bunch of enemies, because that attack right there does pierce. Yeah, let's see how many this pierces through. Ooh killed like four zombies right there okay I think that's gonna be it we got 18 that'll do it and I just realized we can fight this boss in the ice biome and put this armor back on that could be pretty helpful and we actually do have a Louis AFK recipe for a demon altar so let's just do that and put this right here that way we don't have to run over to uh, the corruption biome so there it is, the Dread Lantern. So it's just five shadow scales, 15 life embers from all those pumpkin enemies, and 30 pumpkins. Sweet. 
So unfortunately, we're pretty close to the end of night, so let's wait until we have a new night, and then we can start up the boss fight. Okay, well, it just turned back to night, and I've got our ice armor on, so we'll get that 15% extra damage, and let's start this up. Okay, this kind of seems like golemish right now. Ooh. What's going on? Oh, I've got to hit the, the feet. Okay, let's go knock the feet off. It's kind of interesting. I'm gonna pop some buffs just to be safe. I just got iron skin and I think regeneration. Okay, this is kind of just a fun bullet dodging boss fight so far. Bouncing pumpkin balls. Oh, oh dear. I should have built a taller arena. Okay, there's a lot of projectiles now. Sometimes I just stop shooting so I can focus on dodging for a little bit. Because it's hard to multitask in this game sometimes. Ooh, those are all close together. I just realized this tree is making it a perfect arena for the boss to get tons of bouncing pumpkins everywhere. It's a cool song. There we go. Now we can do damage to the boss again. I'm gonna try to get to this side of the boss. So much less bouncing over here. Okay, back to this phase. I hope this isn't just phase one, because this is decently chaotic, and if this is just like the first part to a crazy boss fight, it could be a little insane. Okay, damage phase. Keep thinking like, oh, use my rage or adrenaline. I haven't played Calamity for so long, but it still sticks with me. This is a very good fight to have your rocket boots for. Whoa, so many pumpkins. I think those are pumpkins or they're just fireballs. Okay. Fortunately, they're not doing too much damage to us, though. Okay, I'm gonna use a, my first heal there. Okay, now the boss is moving. Here we go. And the song just got to its cool part. I mean, the whole song's cool, but this part is especially cool. There's nothing like having just really awesome boss music and a crazy cool looking boss. Oh yes! I was kind of dreading a second phase, but now that it's here, I'm happy that we have it. This is such a cool looking eyeball thing. Honestly, I really love the boss design. The first part of the boss was kind of suspenseful. And then there's this big payoff here when there's just projectiles everywhere. And the projectiles aren't too overly powerful, which is nice because you can dodge them, feel nice, but you don't really just get demolished if you get hit by them. And there we go. We've defeated the Flaming Pumpkin. And let's see what it gives us. The Spiked Pumpkin Amulet. Getting struck has a 33% chance to erupt flames from your body. And then we've got, oh, a yo-yo. And I didn't even notice, but we have dread flame. And that looks like it's a crafting material for all sorts of stuff. So we can do an accessory for throwing weapons, some summoner armor. What is this? A material for a cool throwing set. And then we've got a magic weapon, a summon weapon, a melee, and we've got a ranged weapon. Yes! So let's craft this pumpkin flare. Oh my goodness. Look at that! That is so cool! <laughs> okay, this might be finally an upgrade to our energy rifle. Yeah, this seems like it's gonna be an upgrade. And I love that it lights up what we shoot at. And it even shoots particles downward. That's really amazing for exploring. 
Okay, we need to find an enemy so we can get hit and see what the pumpkin amulet does. We'll be able to find one down here for sure. Okay, we've got a 33% chance. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, probably not going to be worth switching off regeneration though. Because I don't like getting hit that often. And you got to be really close to them when you get hit. Oh, and there's some of these pumpkin slimes. So they s do spawn in other biomes. It's not like a jungle thing. It's probably just anywhere at night. Well, that was a super fun episode. We made a ton of progress. We defeated the Eater of Worlds, Queen Bee, and the Flaming Pumpkin. And we even got two new weapons right here. And, of course, the Rainbow Handgun that shoots the big rainbow things that aren't shooting right now. There we go. Well, next episode, we're for sure going to be fighting Skeletron, going to the dungeon, and then there's a few bosses that come after Skeletron before the Wall of Flesh. So I'm excited to show you guys those ones as well. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.